I was 14, 8th grade, last year of middle school. I had to go. So I got up from my seat in math class, took the wooden plank that was supposed to be the bathroom pass, and strolled through the hallways to the bathroom. The bathroom on the main floor had a sign on it saying out of order, use upstairs or downstairs bathroom. A random older guy walked up to me and asked with a smile on his face if I knew where the nearest bathroom was. I told him yeah, either upstairs or downstairs. He thanked me and walked to the stairs. So to avoid more potential conversation with the guy, I went down. I wondered who that guy could be, definitely not staff. Maybe a parent. I went down to the lower level, which was literally only for bathrooms and extra locker rooms for the sport teams. I opened the door to the bathroom. The light was off, as usual for this bathroom since it was the least used one. I went to the stall and shut the door. I covered the toilet seat with paper and sat down. Suddenly, there was a white light flashing in the bathroom, and I heard the sound of the fire alarm outside of the bathroom. It was a fire drill. My heart dropped because I didn't know what to do. It was the first fire drill of the year. Would I get away with just using the bathroom while everyone else was outside? At this point, I figured I'd just do it. The flashing light got a bit annoying, as did the alarm coming from outside. Suddenly, the alarm got much louder. Then I realized it was because the door opened, and over came marching somebody right to my stall door. I saw their feet underneath the stall. I thought for sure it was a teacher coming to check the room for any students. They didn't say anything, though. I didn't know if I should say something or not. I looked at their shoes. They were just facing the door but I noticed they weren't just standing there. I saw through that dreaded one-inch crack of the stall door that everybody hates, someone's face pressed up against it. Most apparently, a man's eye opened as wide as possible. Then there was a chuckle from the other side. I was breathing heavily now, heart racing too. I didn't know if I should scream or not. Then, the person got on his knees and stuck his head underneath the stall to look at me. It was that man from the hallway. When he saw it was me, he literally crawled under the door and into the stall and grabbed a hold of me, covering my mouth first thing. I remember he said things like, don't struggle and just relax. I didn't know what he was going to do to me. It was an unreal feeling, like my life was flashing before my eyes at such a young age, an age that you think you're invincible. Then the fire alarm got louder again as the door opened. It was the principal's voice. Is anybody in here? I screamed, and though muffled through the man's hand, the principal heard it and came rushing over to the stall trying to open it. He screamed to open the door. The man let go of me, opened the door in the principal's face, and ran for it. The principal was a very old man, so he didn't chase after him. The school also didn't have cameras at this point, so as far as I know, the guy got away. The principal actually hugged me and was very emotional, telling me to come with him so we could call my parents. All my friends saw me almost in tears walking with my parents to their car. It was humiliating, but I was also just happy. The principal saw the man pull the fire alarm and run downstairs, so he slowly but surely made his way down there and checked the bathroom first thing. He unfortunately passed away five years ago. I still have great appreciation for that principle. He was my hero in a certain way. Back in high school, fire drills were usually a lot of fun, depending on what class you were in and which friends you were with. One particular dark, cloudy day during third period, my friends and I who were in the same class heard from the grapevine that there was going to be a fire drill this period. It was a Friday close to the end of the year, and there was really no work for any of us in our later classes. So we figured during the fire drill we'd sneak down to the sump behind the school by the woods and smoke. We waited anxiously for that ear-piercing ringing to go off, and when it did, it was music to our ears. We looked at each other and laughed, and we were the first ones out of the class and down the hall. 
While everyone else on the side of the school was headed to the front entrance, we were on our way to the back entrance by the woods. We walked out in the middle of the crowd to the back section of the school by the basketball and tennis courts. We were pretty strategic about our escape. We made sure there were no teachers in sight and crossed through a narrow opening between the tennis courts and a line of bushes. That led straight to the sump. A couple of kids watched us and probably thought we were a bunch of weirdos, but it didn't matter. We made it to the sump, which was literally a giant hole in the ground surrounded by bushes and trees, right at the edge of the woods. It had a nickname, but I don't remember it. All I know is, it was the place that everyone came to drink, smoke, and do other drugs at night. Kids even had bonfires there before. It was a really dark day. The clouds were a darkish gray, giving the morning an almost early night kind of feeling. The breezy air hinted at a storm approaching too, which honestly just made it more fun for some reason. We waited until all the commotion up the hill quieted down, and we assumed everyone went back inside. Then we started talking and laughing. My friend went through his bag to get out that pipe and grinder. That's when I noticed something in the distance by the woods. It looked kind of like a person's face. A couple shrubs covered where the body would be, but what I saw just looked too much like a face. I looked away for a second to get my friend's attention and then pointed in the direction of it, but when I looked back, it was gone. They thought I was an idiot, but now that it was gone, I was like 70% sure what I saw was a person. The other 30% of me wasn't sure if I was just imagining things. It was very dark after all. They didn't want to move though, so I didn't either. We smoked, and the higher I got, the more paranoid I got. I secretly never really enjoyed smoking too much for that reason. It gets me paranoid but I went along with it just because it was what my group of friends did. Now that I was high, all that I was thinking of was that face in the woods. Did someone see us? Were we gonna get in trouble? That's all I could think about. My friends wanted to walk through the woods now to an old shack that used to be used by the school for something. It was about a minute walk into the woods. I was uncomfortable with it. The air started to feel moist, and I started to feel those tiny pre-storm rain droplets. I once again warned them that we should go back because of the storm. They kind of ignored me. On the way there, I swore I could hear footsteps that weren't ours. But honestly, I was so high I didn't even know where I was hearing them from. In front of us, behind us, to the left, right, I had no idea. Then, from behind us... I was sure I heard a big stick snap in half. I stopped and turned around, saying loudly, what the fuck was that? My friends stopped too, but they didn't hear it apparently. There was nobody visible behind us, and once again my friends thought I was an idiot. Apparently I seemed like I was losing my mind because I became the blunt of all my friends' jokes after that. The big old shack finally came into view. It was bigger than I remembered, and more creepy looking. The school stopped using this old building years ago, probably because it looked like it was about to collapse. Even the path that led to the front door had grass growing through the cracks. The front door was wedged open, of course. Surely students came in there all the time. My friend Jack pushed open the door fully with force. It was so dark in there. There was little light from outside to begin with. It seemed like there was just a bunch of old, empty crates, a lot of them smashed to pieces. There was a kind of nasty smell, however, one that my friends didn't remember the last time we were in there. The sound of something squishy plopping on the ground, and then a foot hitting the wood floor made us all jump. In the corner of the room was the shadow outline of a really tall person. We could only see him due to the little amount of light sneaking in through the window. We didn't scream or anything. We simply walked out the door the way we came in and walked quickly back in the direction of the school, aka civilization. All three of us took a look back at the window nearest to the person, and I swear to God, at that exact moment, the first flash of lightning struck, and what we saw during that flash was nothing short of horrifying. There was a guy with a seriously deformed face standing at the window, and I don't mean to talk ill of anyone with any kind of deformity, 
but this man almost didn't look human. Half of his face seemed to be drooping down. You couldn't even see one of his eyes. He was so close to the window too, his face was practically pressed up against it. I initiated a run and my friends followed. We got back down to the sump in less than a minute, where we collected our thoughts on what to do next, just as the rain started to finally come down. And just then, my friend Jack pointed up the hill back to the woods. There was a person standing behind a shrub, exposing only his face, just like what I saw before. This time ten times closer, but still not close enough to describe his face. All I know is, it wasn't the same person as in the shack. We ran back to the school and hid by the back entrance where it was dry. We all came to an agreement to just go home, forget about what just happened, not to tell anyone, and never go back to that shack again. And that was exactly what we did. Our school had this door that led down to a half stairway to some weird dark hallway. A lot of students knew about it, but nobody really knew what was down there. The door only seemed to be open during fire drills, in which just about every door in the building is opened. My friend Kyle and I were particularly interested in finding out what was down there. I'll admit I was a pretty bad student in my first two years of high school, and I got into a lot of trouble. So Kyle and I planning to venture down there during a fire drill wasn't one of our dumbest ideas. We had three classes together out of eight, so our chances of being in the same class during a fire drill was pretty decent, and luckily it happened during study hall. So as the alarm rang, Kyle and I ran to one of the bathrooms, which already had its door wedged open with a door stopper. We hid in one of the stalls until all the commotion in the hall was gone and everyone was outside. Then, getting down those stairs was a piece of cake. There was a very dim light hanging from the ceiling. It gave off just enough light to see a doorway that led to another half flight of stairs. This one to complete darkness. We looked for a light switch, but couldn't find one. We used the screens on our phones as light to navigate the dark. We found a door that had a do not enter sign on it. Of course, what did we do? We opened the door, struggling at that nonetheless. It felt like it was a thousand pounds, and it scraped along the floor as if it had fallen off its hinges. When we managed to get it open, we found just a small, square room, maybe a hundred square feet. The room wasn't silent, though. There was a little clicking sound, kind of like a metallic dinging. It was coming from a vent in the corner. We had to see what it could be. Maybe an animal or something. But as we went closer, we started to hear grunting and groaning type noises. Kyle dared me to hover the screen over the vent to see what was inside. I really wanted to know what was in there, so I did. I pressed the screen of my phone up to the vents and got on my knees. Now I could hear breathing. I pressed my ear up against the vent and immediately felt something grab onto my ear. I screamed in a panic and Kyle quickly came and pulled the hand off my ear. I jumped away from the vent first of all, and saw a hand reaching through it. Kyle and I ran out of there, shutting the do not enter door behind us, and running back upstairs to the bathroom. The next day, Kyle and I went to talk to the janitor, Tom. He was one of the janitors who didn't really give a crap about his job. He didn't even seem angry about us going down there, he just asked what we were doing. We explained what happened and asked if there was somebody working in the vents. He said nobody had been in that room for years, nor was there any way into that vent down there. Kyle and I looked at each other, and I knew his heart sank just like mine did, as we both stood there wondering, who was in that vent down there that day? <laughs> 